Hi there, Paul Smith from livingonanarrowboat.co.uk. Welcome to the first in a series of videos about life on board a narrowboat uh, and the practicalities of living afloat. Uh, this series came about as a result of me uploading a, a video in September last year about the cost of uh, living on a narrowboat. Uh, as a result of publishing that video, I received many, many, many comments uh, on the uh, video on YouTube. Uh, most of them, however, were negative. Uh, some of them were uh, distressingly very racist. My partner Sally is Filipino and there were quite a lot of comments made about that. Uh, but there were also a lot of comments made about the lack of useful content in the video. Uh, on reviewing that video, uh, they're absolutely right. Uh, it was uh, me trying to generate traffic to the site to uh, sell one of the books that I've published. Uh, so to try and compensate for that, I'm producing this series of helpful videos, uh, all based on content that I have on the site. I've spent thousands of hours uh, writing and researching content uh, for the site. Uh, and as a result, it is generally viewed as uh, one of the most helpful sites on the internet for people considering a life afloat. This first video is uh, about narrowboat central heating. I've spent much of the last week trying to decide which central heating to install on James. James, uh, as you might know, is quite an old narrowboat. When the boat was built in 1977, it was a wonder to behold and at the cutting edge of modern technology. The Torgem stove fitted in James was a popular stove at the time, uh, but it's no longer made and it isn't as good as most popular narrowboat stove these days, the Squirrel from Morso. My Torgem has a back boiler attached, which feeds three radiators along the port side. One halfway down the boat in my office area, a tiny radiator in the bathroom and a slightly larger one in the rear cabin where we sleep. The radiators don't heat the boat very well though. I feel little benefit from the radiator in the office, so to keep warm in the winter when I'm sitting immobile for hours uh, working, I supplement the heat drifting back from the front of the boat with a Dimplex 500 watt greenhouse heater. The Dimplex doesn't produce a huge amount of heat, uh, but on all but the coldest days, it's just enough to supplement the heat generated by the stove. By the time the gravity propelled hot water has trickled 40 feet from the stove to our bedroom it's lost the ability to provide effective heating the radiator at best is tepid the fact that the bedroom is cold isn't really a problem it's a little uncomfortable uh, climbing under the duvet's icy covers when we go to bed but it soon warms up the real problem is the damp we have a dehumidifier in the bedroom to deal with the damp it does a very effective job of removing the moisture from the room, but it's quite expensive to run the 600 watt appliance when we're attached to the landline and it's not practical to run it by the inverter uh, and the battery bank uh, when we're not. We need central heating on the boat to supplement the stove over the winter. Central heating will make life much easier as well during the warm day, cold night period in the spring and autumn when we need a quick burst of heat at either end of the day. The stove is very frustrating to use at these times of the year. In the morning when we light the stove we don't really feel much benefit from it before we leave the boat to go to work and then the stove continues to heat the boat which is already being heated by the rising sun. Central heating would allow us to quickly heat the boat for the short period we need it and then just as quickly turn off the heat when we leave the boat. I've considered all the options open to me uh, the first that I quickly dismissed was gas. Gas central heating is very expensive to run. Many ex hire boats are bought by liverboards. Most hire boats have gas central heating systems. I've spoken to a few of the new owners who are appalled at the cost of keeping the boats warm. Buying two 13 kilogram propane uh, bottles every week isn't unusual and at a cost of £27 each uh, here at Calcutt at the moment. Heating James with gas would cost me uh, as much as £250 every month. 
When James was taken away to have its new steel cabin fitted, I stayed on one of our 45 feet cruiser stern boats fitted with an Aldi gas heating system. I used 38 kilograms of gas in 10 days or 3.8 kilograms per day. The cabin on the, the boat uh, was just under 30 feet long compared with 48 feet cabin on James. I stayed on the boat in November when the weather wasn't particularly cold. The boat was warm enough but certainly not too warm. Clearly heating the much larger cabin space on James over the much colder month of January, February and March would be much more expensive so I'm not going to use gas. With, das with gas uh, discounted I then focused on diesel central heating. Calcutt Boats are the UK agents for the very popular Canadian Hurricane diesel heater. It's widely acknowledged as the best diesel heating system on the market for narrowboats. It's reliable, it's relatively uh, easy and, and cost effective to service and can accommodate the central heating and hot water needs on the most demanding uh, user. It's a wonderful heater but there are three things I don't like about it. The first reason and probably the one which put me off most is the cost. It's uh, currently, and that's November 2013, uh, £2,640 for the 7.3 kilowatt heater and a further £600 for the narrowboat fitting kit. £3,240 is way over my budget at the moment. The official Hurricane blurb claims that it's quiet in operation. In, real, in reality, it's anything but quiet. Stephen Cox, our buyer, has a Hurricane fitted to his own boat, the Whistling Kettle, which is more three boats away from me. I can clearly hear the roar of his Hurricane exhaust when I'm inside James. The Hurricane isn't the only noisy diesel heater on the market. Uh, Narrowboat Nell, which is moored next to me, has a Mikuni on board. Unfortunately, the exhaust is adjacent to our bedroom. Watson and Sue on Nell are out cruising at the moment, but they'll return from their last trip of the year any day now. Nell will be left on the mooring with the Mikuni turned on to provide frost protection over the winter. There's a cold snap forecast mid next week with temperatures as low as minus seven. I'm not looking forward to be woken up in the middle of the night by the sound of a jet engine taking off six feet from a right ear. The third thing putting me off the Hurricane is its size. It's a big unit at nine inches high, 13 inches wide and 19, 19 inches deep. It's the size that it is so that the internal components are accessible for servicing which means that the servicing can be achieved far more cost effectively than some small and more compact diesel heaters. There's not a huge amount of free space in my engine room so I would struggle to fit it in. With the Hurricane discounted I then considered the Wabasto Thermotop C. The, the, the Thermostop Thermotop C is much much smaller than the Hurricane at six and a half inches high, nine and a half inches wide and four inches deep. It would easily fit into the available space in my engine room. It's much cheaper too, about £2,000 cheaper to be precise. The price difference is the difference between me having a central heating system fitted, fitted sorry, uh, is the difference between me having a central heating system fitted this winter or waiting another year. Unfortunately, one of the problems with the Hurricane is also a problem with the Wabasto. It's noisy. However, I don't think it's anywhere as noisy as a Hurricane. I don't think I can get over the noise problem unless I have a, a gas system installed. I won't use gas because of the high running costs though. Anyway, I think I'm probably making too much fuss about the noise. The water heater itself will be in the engine room. Uh, the Wabasto, like the Hurricane and the Makuni, is noisier outside the boat than it is inside and it's only noisy when the heater is on. The only time I'd be close enough to the heater uh, and its noise would be at, at night uh, when we're in bed. When we're in bed we don't want any heating on so the noise wouldn't be a problem. I've been told that the compact size of the Wabasto means that servicing is more expensive. Rather than replace small parts when necessary as you can with a much larger and more accessible Hurricane, you have to replace much larger assemblies with the Basto. I'll have to replace a huge number of parts though before the Wabasto costs me anywhere near as much as the Hurricane. I'm very interested in the Wabasto thermos, Thermotop but I want to hear from someone who's been using the heater for a while. I spoke to two owners. The first owner was on a boat moored about 50 metres away from me. I stood chatting with the guy on his cruiser stern deck with the heater ran 
in the engine bay beneath me. He was very happy with the heater's performance, uh, and I was happy that we could easily hold a conversation over the noise from the exhaust. The second, more clinical report uh, was from Peter and Margaret Berry on board narrowboat Kelly Louise. I contacted them after reading one of their blog posts about the Webasto heater. I emailed Peter uh, and he sent me a comprehensive reply which is uh, which is on the site. Um, so the next step is uh, is to, to get the Webasto installed. I'm happy that it, the heater will work for me. The running costs are acceptable but I'll have to increase my maintenance budget by the cost of the annual service. One or two helpful individuals who obviously don't know me very well have suggested that I do the servicing myself. I know my limitations though and accept that my maintenance skills only extend to running a vacuum cleaner uh, over it once a week. Uh, so I'll organise the installation. Uh, at least three days will be needed for that. There's a fair amount of work to be done. The original radiator needs to be disconnected from the stove's back boiler and removed. The back boiler needs to be made safe. New larger radiators and pipes need fitting. The current gas water heater will have to be removed and then the heater will have to be fitted and connected to the radiators uh, uh, and the chlorifier under our bed. Uh, the work is going to be quite disruptive and unpleasant if we're on board so I've scheduled it for when I'm due to be away for a while in February next year. Hopefully we'll come back to a warm and cosy boat. That's it for this first video. My apologies for uh, stumbling over my words a little bit. It's the first time I've done a, a voiceover for one of these. I will get better, I promise you. Um, if you want to more information about living on a narrow boat, then that's where you need to go. Livingonanarrowboat.co.uk There's over 4,000 posts and pages on the site, packed full of information. Anything that you need to know, you can find out there. Livingonanarrowboat.co.uk Thanks for now. Bye-bye.